I thought I might make a quick video here on a, a kind of a, a trick, if you will, uh, that actually a, uh, uh, an old-time TV radio repairman taught me way back when I was in working at his shop in high school. Uh, the, this is a resistance substitution box. And one of the problems with the, with these boxes is the resistors in them often are carbon composition, which tend to drift up with age. And you can see that here. This is set to 2.2K. This, this switch switches from high, uh, the high resistance, which is this knob, to low resistance. Now, I've already cleaned the contacts inside on the switch as well as on these rotary switches and uh, I have verified that the problem is that the actual resistor that should be 2.2K is actually reading 3.5K. So the, the trick is that since carbon resistors tend to always drift up, unless you overload them and actually burn them out, uh, they, you can uh, pull them back down to their nominal value very easily. So let me show you how you do that. Okay, what I have done, this by the way is the particular resistor that we're dealing with here. Notice the way it's built. There's a rotary switch and the one end of the resistor is tied to the contact down there. And then all of these are tied together with a ring that uh, is common. And so you select one end with the rotary switch, and then that gets uh, sent to the to the contacts at the out uh, at the outside. So you notice now it reads 2.2k uh, or 2.22k, which is what it's supposed to read. So how did I do that? Well, all I did is I connected another resistance box. Now you can use a pot, and I'll explain another way to do this if you don't have two boxes, but uh, this is true. You can do this, by the way, in an old radio as well. What I've done is I've set this to 4K and 2K. So in other words, I have a 6K resistor paralleled across this uh, resistor whose value has gone up to 3.5K. And that brings the total resistance down to 2.2K. Now, when you're doing this, you should make sure that the resistor you use has at least the same wattage rating as the one that you're paralleling, just so you won't create a problem. Uh, obviously, if you put a uh, an 8 watt resistor across a 2 watt resistor, the 8 watt resistor is in danger of uh, burning up, particularly if they're roughly the same value. Now in this case, we have 6K in parallel with 3.5K. Now this technique works very well in vintage radios and is frankly a way where you find a resistor that's, that's out of tolerance and you just want to pull it back to within tolerance to see if that fixes the problem in the radio. Or you just want to do it because that's where your uh, that's kind of where your head's at. You just want to get this radio back to to its nominal specifications. And so this technique works really well for two reasons. One, carbon resistors tend to always go up in value, which means that whatever the value is, if it's not still within spec, it's it's higher than spec. And the second thing is that when you parallel with another resistor of roughly the same wattage rating, you're actually increasing the wattage rating of the resistor you're replacing or, or you're paralleling. So I'm going to solder in a 6K. Actually, what I'm going to do is go a little lower. I'm going to use a 5.6K. Uh, so uh, 400 ohms lower than this. In fact, let's let's try that. Let's try 5.6K. Okay, 5.6K will bring us down to 2.16K, 
which is just perfect because then if this resistor drifts up a little bit in another five years or so, by the way this resistance box is uh, about 60 years old. So uh, not quite as old as I am but uh, it, it's got some years on it. And uh, if it drifts up a little more it'll still be within spec. So let me go get a 5.6k resistor and solder it in and then we'll uh, come back and see how, how we wound up uh, in this particular case. And now as you see I've soldered that resistor in and this is 2.2k. I want to go to the 3.3k position and that's still within tolerance 3.26. This one 2.2 and the next one 1.5k is reading 3.4k. So I gotta obviously do that one as well. And when I'm done, I will have this resistance box back to its nominal values throughout the range. And then I'll do this switch over here. So what I've done is in effect recalibrated this resistance substitution box. In doing that, I not only have made it more accurate, but I've also increased its wattage or power handling capability because every time you parallel a resistor the wattage that that parallel combination can take uh, goes up. In other words, the uh, by reducing the resistance with a parallel resistor I've put two 1 watt resistors in parallel creating effectively a 2 watt resistor in that position. Okay, just thought you might be interested in this because a lot of people who haven't dealt with carbon composition resistors and don't realize that they uh, almost never go down. Now obviously if you find one that went down in value you'll have to replace it. But if it's just went up in value what you can do is use this parallel resistor approach to bring the, the uh, unit, whether it's a substitution box like this or uh, an old radio or TV or Oh, any piece of electronic equipment. Now I used a metal film resistor, a modern metal film resistor across, so the that is not likely to drift, but the carbon resistor might drift more in the years to come depending on how much power I put through it and quite frankly depending on the original characteristics. I think you noticed that the 3.3K is still within spec even though it also is 60 years old. So anyway, hope you enjoyed this, got a little something out of it. Neat little trick that uh, I was taught 60 years ago. Actually I was taught that trick about the same time I built this box. Uh, and uh, so that gives you an idea of, uh, well not only how old I am, but also how far technology has come. Modern metal film resistors tend not to drift like the old carbon ones did. But anyway, hope you enjoyed it. Stay safe. Have a nice day.